This study has been uh, done recently so that we are following up on previous studies how to treat exactly pH positive ALL. Now, first of all, the treatment so far was usually chemo intensive chemotherapy and with the rise of the pH positive category of ALL, we used to add also what we call tyrosine kinase inhibitor or TKIs. Now, uh, first of all, it was a chemotherapy plus TKI. And when patients would reach what we call a CR or complete remission in the first cycle, we would, we would send them for stem cell transplant. Now, the problem is, is that recently we have seen that even so, some patients would have some relapses, probably, probably due to one of the mutations that we noticed that, that to be present that's called the T315I. Uh, and that, that particular clone or those particular genetic mutations were responsible for up to 75% of relapses. So that's why the logic in behind it was to uh, add, a, uh, to do a combination therapy of the regular chemotherapy plus a TKI, especially the, new, the newer, one of the newer generations TKIs, which is called ponatinib, which has been proven over and over again to be really effective against those specific types of mutations. Now, throughout the study, we have found that we had patients that were enrolled, and at the time we had some selective criteria, of course. Among them, it, there were no uh, exclusion criteria as to if those patients had previous uh, chemotherapy or had previous uh, TKIs used, and we see that they, were, they weren't having any responses. Now, when we started the treatment at the time with our study, we had 86 patients that were enrolled in that study. Uh, out of those uh, 86 patients, when we started the, the whole protocol, 66 of them, which is a really good number, have, have achieved a complete remission within the first cycle, which, uh, and, uh, which showed a very good promising results. At the same time, while we were following up with those studies, we found that most patients, up to 86 or 87% of those patients, has, have reached what we call a complete molecular remission, or CMR, which uh, for explanatory purposes, it is, a, it is when we were doing a PCR transcript of the BCR-ABL gene, uh, translocation and we were and we found their levels to be inferior to 0.01 percent so those uh, results were really encouraging and promising so far now the con uh, of course a uh, combination of this therapy uh, along with the chemotherapy itself uh, presented some issues that we wanted to analyze including the safety of the, of the treatment the possible side effects that were ongoing now when we first started with the method, we used to give the hyper CVAD regimen, and when we added the ponatinib at a dose of 45 milligrams. And that, uh, that ponatinib dose was supposed to be for 14 days and the induction cycle only, and then continuously from cycle two and above. Now, the problem also is that ponatinib has some side, uh, some side effects. Most, uh, some side effects that started, that started to appear mainly with the patient number 37 in our study. And that's why our regimen at the time had to be amended. So that's why we started with a dose of 45 milligrams first for 14 days on first cycle. Then we started at cycle two, 45 milligrams. Then we decreased to a, a dose of 30 milligrams when patients would achieve either CR or complete remission with incomplete hematological recovery or CRI. And then we would decrease it even further to 15 milligrams daily once patient would reach CMR. And from there, we were monitoring with time. The good, uh, the good part is that we were starting to see uh, good results and we had a good, re a good recovery and good, uh, a good CMR ratio for all our patients. And one, one of the good things also in our study is that we saw that at least for the first four weeks, we had a 0% mortality with that new regimen. Of course, some patients developed some side effects and some toxicities. We had mainly two patients that were considered to have a toxicity that is directly related to ponatinib. One that, uh, both of them are cardiotoxicities. One of them went into what we call an n -STEMI, and the second who had a severe chest angina and, and died suddenly after that. But even so, when we were looking at those numbers, overall, we had a, we had a, uh, a very good result uh, on the long term. The, uh, the event-free survival, when we first started the treatment, Treatment, all the way to following up until some events showed up was in for over the span of six years was an average 65%. And the overall survival rate of all patients was still up to 75% on this whole six year follow up, which were as results and as numbers go by, these are very, very encouraging, especially when we're looking at regular treatments for those types of patients. And that is why we can, we, we were, we came to the conclusion that over this combination of hyper CVAT plus ponatinib, especially when we are adjusting the dosage of the ponatinib, are considered to be safe and are considered to be 
to be of value later on in the future. And one important note that we have to add also is that when we were doing some studies, like, like I said at the introduction, before the, the treatment was to do chemotherapy uh, with a TKI and then send the patients for stem cell transplant. We did a retrospective, uh, we did a, a comparison between patients that were sent to transplant and patients that were not sent to transplant. And we found that the, the overall survival rate was not significantly different between the two groups, which could be also encouraging in the sense that uh, with the development of new medication, especially with the potent uh, ponatinib that is, in that is in place in combination with chemotherapy, we could at one point just give this type of treatment to our patients without the need for stem cell. And, uh, and overall have, even, uh, have either similar results or even better ones.